Welcome to Fringe Pop 321, the show that believes the world is stranger than we think, but thinking should not be strange. Now we all know what this is. It's a battery. The first true battery was invented in 1800 by Alessandro Volta. Sound familiar? There were of course earlier attempts, but the credit goes to him. Now some would say that working batteries are a lot older than that all the way back to ancient Babylon. Their proof? Well, something now called the Baghdad Battery. It's a favorite artifact among alternative history researchers in their never-ending quest to tell us everything we know about history is wrong. Is there anything to the Baghdad Battery? Well, let's see. In 1938, the German artist and archeologist Wilhelm Koenig published an article about the discovery of a five and a half inch jar that decades later would take center stage of alternative history speculation. The jar was found during an excavation in Kujut Rabu, just outside modern Baghdad in Iraq. Here's a photograph from Koenig's article. M. Jeffrey Oakes describes what we see here. The jar contained a copper cylinder, the bottom of which was capped by a copper disc. The jar was sealed with bitumen or asphalt, and an iron rod was suspended from an asphalt stopper at the top of the copper cylinder into the center of the cylinder. The rod showed evidence of having been corroded with an acidic agent, such as wine or grape juice or vinegar. Koenig theorized that the jar was actually a battery. He further proposed that the presumed battery was used for gilding copper with silver by electroplating. The jar has since become known as the Baghdad Battery. Though primitive in nature, the artifact is often used to establish the outlandish claim that certain civilizations in the ancient Near East developed fantastic modern energy technology, or that the aliens taught them how to do so. So what's up with this? Is this really a battery? Studies have indeed shown that the Baghdad battery was capable of conducting an electrical current. Replicas of the Baghdad battery using lemon juice or vinegar as an electrolyte solution have produced low voltages, roughly around 0.8 to 2 volts. Creating a strong electrical current would require stringing many of these batteries together. You can actually buy kits online to create a whole bunch of these and experiment yourself. Now those who created replicas of the battery in research wanted to know if it could be used for electroplating specifically. That was Koenig's original theory. According to the BBC, in the late 1970s, Dr. Arne Egbrecht, then director of the Romer and Palacios Museum in Hildesheim, connected many replica Baghdad batteries together using grape juice as an electrolyte, just to test out the theory. Now they claimed to have deposited a thin layer of silver onto another surface, just one ten thousandth of a millimeter thick. Unfortunately, subsequent researchers at the same institution have been unable to reproduce that result. There were no notes or even photos of the original experiment taken. Sort of, well, the dog ate my experiment, and that naturally raised suspicion. The absence of documentation about the experiment and the original claim was not a good thing. Now, after careful consideration of the presumed electroplating process described by Kearney, or at least theorized by him, another researcher, Eggert, has concluded that a modern process, a modern process, circa 1840, that's contemporary with the discovery, was sort of imposed on the Baghdad jar by Koenig. Eggert writes, there are no literary sources or gilded objects which prove ancient knowledge of galvanic gilding. The gilding method of the Baghdad battery, the Baghdad silversmiths, is identical to the invention of BP 8447, which was a patent filed in 1840. Therefore, there is no reason to postulate that this process is a relic of ancient knowledge. Now this suggests that the method was imposed on the object 
by its discoverer, Koenig. He apparently had heard of the method, looked at the jar and thought, hey, this looks like a battery. I'll bet you could do electroplating with this because I just heard of this idea over here as to how it could be done in the primitive world. He just assumed it. The absence of scientific proof that the Baghdad jar had an electrical function and the likelihood that Koenig just assumed it was a battery used for electroplating based on a method developed at the same time he made the discovery prompts two questions. First, is there a better explanation for the so-called Baghdad battery? And second, is this proof at all of high technology in antiquity, just sort of generally? There's a simpler explanation for the Baghdad battery as it's constructed, in other words, as we have it. The jar is of a type widely used to store ancient scrolls. Anyone who's seen the Dead Sea Scrolls will have seen jars that look similar. They might be a little bit bigger, but they're very similar. The metal cylinder inside the Baghdad jar could have been simply used to wind the scroll around so that it would sort of fit more neatly. The corrosion of the iron rod within the jar may have been caused by residual grape juice or wine being present in the jar as it was reused later to store such liquids. But we just don't know. Those things are possible, but we don't have any evidence that this is actually the case either. Even if the Baghdad battery was indeed a workable means of storing energy, it's no proof of advanced energy technology in the ancient world. There are some obvious reasons to draw that conclusion. First, given the low voltage of reconstructions that we've already noted, for the Baghdad battery to be of any meaningful use, the ancient people who fashioned the object would need tens of thousands of them to produce power for a village, or say, to light up a temple. But this is the only one that has ever been found. Second, the battery was discovered in a Parthian era that is the Sasanian site. This places its age at roughly 250 BC all the way up into maybe 650 AD. Now that is a far cry from the civilizations of ancient Babylon or the Akkadians or the Sumerians, civilizations that ancient alien and alternative history theorists want their viewers and their readers to associate mentally with the discovery. That's two millennia removed, distant from those civilizations. Consequently, the Baghdad battery isn't even evidence for weak energy storage for those more ancient civilizations, much less proof of a high energy science in great antiquity. The jar as constructed can conduct electricity. We can admit that because it has been replicated. If we assume that was its use, we can make it work. But there's no evidence it was ever used for that purpose. Thanks for watching this episode of Fringe Pop 321. For more information on this and other episodes, please visit our website and the webpage for any episode. And please come back. We have more to come because what you know may not be so.